Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will discuss how to model real life phenomena using sine and cosine functions. In class, we discussed how to do this for the Ferris wheel type problems. In this video, I will discuss how to do this for what we call the year problems. If you open your booklet up to this example, we call these the year questions. Um, events that are cyclic, like seasonal variations in temperature, can be modeled with trig functions. Our example, the average temperature for Regina is hottest at 27 degrees Celsius on July 28th and coolest at negative 16 degrees Celsius on January 10th. The idea that's hottest means a high temperature. That's an indicator that this is our max. And it's coolest is a lower temperature, which indicates our medium, medium minimum, <laughs> excuse me. So in A, we want to write the cosine equation for the graph. So let's begin right away with that. First, we need to know the amplitude. So the amplitude is represented by A. You can find it by taking the absolute value of the max minus the min, and then dividing that by two. If we do this, we end up with 27 plus 16, because subtracting a negative creates a positive. And dividing out, we end up with the number 21.5. Next, we'll look at the value for B. In trying to find B, we need to understand that any time we're working with the year problems, the period is always 365 days. And we know that B is 2 pi over the period for cosine graphs. So in our case, B becomes 2 pi over 365. Next, we need the value of the phase shift. The year begins on January 1st. So in terms of how many days have passed, we're going to let January 1st represent day 0. So now we just have to count from January 1st to January, excuse me, to July 28th, which is where we reach the maximum on the cosine graph to let us know where that maximum begins. So if we start to add up those days, for January we have 31 days, February 28th, March 31, April 30, May 31, June 30, and then 28 days for July, we get a value of 209. So instead of the maximum for cosine beginning at day 0, it really begins at day 209. So our value for C is 209. Lastly, we need a value for D. This also has a formula. It is the average of the maximum and minimum points. And so for us, that is going to be 27 minus 16 divided by 2, which is 5.5. So we have all the numbers we need. We have A, B, C, and D. And we'll just plug those into our standard form of the cosine equation, which would look like T of D, the temperature after a certain number of days to represent a, speci a specific date on the calendar, would be the amplitude 21.5 multiplied or by the cosine of B, 2 pi over 365, times D minus 209, which is our phase shift, add it to 5.5, which is the value of D, our vertical displacement, or the location of our midline. So that completes part A. Now for part B, we want to graph. The graph is going to be a bit tricky this time, just because of the way we want to present it. We want to present it from January 1st, not from July 28th. So as I draw this in, this is my temperature in degrees Celsius, and this is my time in days. I'll extend this graph a little bit more. 
I'm going to scale the y-axis by tens and scale the x-axis by fifties. I know that we usually do this according to the period and split it up into parts of four. So that's why I said this might be a little confusing for you and I certainly don't want that to happen. But we need to represent what's going on with the situation itself. So this is how our scale will look for temperature as well as time. The first thing I want to do is to draw in the midline, which is the equation y equals 5.5, which is about halfway between 0 and 10 on the y-axis. So now we're looking at if I were to start the cosine curve, I'm starting at the max and then moving down to the midline and moving to the minimum. Keep in mind the max is at 27 and the minimum is at negative 16. So those are the points that we'll be looking to begin and end. Now, considering that the period is 365, if we divide 365 by 4, we end up with 91.25. I'm going to round that to 91. So about every 91 days, we should be at a different location on this cosine graph, max, midline, minimum, midline, max. Again, that's every 91 days we're going to make a change to one of those locations. But we're going to start it based on what we know from above that 209 days into this cycle, we're at the max, which is 27. 10 days into the cycle, we're at the min, which is at negative 16. So we're going to use those to plot the points. So at 209 days, I'm going to estimate that's about here. I'm at my maximum. But 10 days, which is January 10th, I'm at the minimum. Now every 91 days after that, I'm making a change. So the 91 days after the 10th day is 101. I just left the minimum, so I should be at the midline. And then I should be at the maximum after that. That's my 209. And then I should be at the minimum, excuse me, at the midline about, that was 209, so 91. So about 300. And then at about 391, I should be back down again at the minimum. So if I draw on this curve, it will look something like this. I'll do my best to make it pretty for you. Now, one of the things you may be concerned about is that we did not write an equation that showed a negative reflection. But remember, our equation assumes that we're starting here at the max 209 days into the cycle. So this is the graph that we will use to represent the entire year. Now for the calculator questions, you'll need your graphing calculator for these. C asks about the average temperature expected for October 4th. So we'll have to figure out how many days after January 1st, October 4th occurs. Plug in that number and then answer the question. And then D asks the average temperature being higher than 23 degrees for how many days. We'll use our graphing calculator to help us with that as well. But first, let's look at part C. So again, Part C asks for the average temperature on October 4th. So we have to do some quick math to figure out how many days have passed to get to October 4th. So with the calculator here, I'll show you. If we do January 31, February 28, March 31, April 30, May 31, June 30, July 31, August 31, September 30, and then four days into October, we are 277 days into the cycle. So we will use the value of D as 277. So D is 277, and we're interested in finding T of D. Now, that really means that we're plugging into this equation that we established above 
but we are going to actually use the calculator to do that. If we were doing it by hand, here's what's happening. We're doing 21.5 times the cosine of 2 pi over 65 multiplied by 277 minus 209. And then when all that's done, we're adding 5.5. Okay, the way we're going to handle that is by putting everything into our calculator. First, go to mode. Make sure you are in radian and function modes. Then go to window. Let's set up the window for our graph. On the X scale, we went from 0 to 400 by 50s. On the Y scale, we went from negative 20, 30, 20 to 30 by 10s. Let me say that again. On the Y scale, we went from negative 20 up to 30 by 10s. Now go to Y equals and key in the function. Notice how I have it keyed in here. 21.5 times the cosine, open parentheses. Notice that there are two sets. 2 pi divided by 365, close the parentheses. Multiply by, open parentheses, x minus 209, close parentheses twice, then add 5.5. Once you have that graph, and you will get this lovely curve that we see here, which looks very similar to the one that we graphed by hand. Now, we just want to know the value of 277 on this graph. So if we hit second and trace, go to value, enter in the number 277 for 277 days after January 1st, then we find that the y value is 13.877. So what this tells us is that on October 4th, the temperature is about 13.9 degrees. So T of D, in this case, T of 277 is about 13.9 degrees Celsius. Now for part D, we are asked to find how many days the average temperature is higher than 23 degrees Celsius. We're going to use our graphing calculator for this one as well. So we have our graph again, go into Y equal down to y2 and key in 23. What that's going to do is graph the line y equals 23 for us. And what we're looking for is when the average temperature is higher than 23 degrees. So we're looking, I'm going to trace, we're looking at the area that begins about here on the curve and want to trace over to how many days difference in the x values for here. So what we're going to do is find the intersection and then subtract the x values of those two points. So I'll start it with the higher one. I'm going to go second trace, intersect. Since I'm already close, I'm going to press enter for first curve, enter for second curve, enter for guess. Notice that that x value is day 245. So we want day 245. And then we're going to go to the other value. I'm going to trace over so that we're close to that one. Do another second trace, intersect, enter for first curve, enter for second curve, enter for the guess. And you can see here we're at about day 173. So we're rounding to whole day numbers. So we're going to subtract those two days from each other to figure out how many days this actually happened. So 245 minus 173 is 72 days. So we're saying the temperature is higher than 23 degrees for 72 days. So that completes the first example. I'll leave it at that one. This video is rather lengthy. But after you've watched this video, make sure that you try the questions for yearly. And if you have any questions at all, we will answer them in class the next time I see you. Enjoy yourselves. Have a great weekend.